Hello everyone and welcome to EVE Fitted. Um, today's video um, is about the rattlesnake uh, in response to a message I got from a friend of mine who just got his first one. Um, I think it's a great opportunity to showcase some basic setups, fits and address some configurations that can be made to cover the most basic ventures uh, which can be undertaken. The rattlesnake is my favorite ship. Uh, I trained for it um, right from when I started playing EVE and coming from a summoner kind of background, um, whatever game, um, I of course looked into the possibilities in EVE and found that this was close to drones and then I followed the progression and even being ga Galente uh, and not knowing much about the game and stuff, a pirate ship and uh, opposing factions seemed strange to me but well, um, the rattlesnake had everything I needed from the stats and I went for it, uh, and uh, yeah, kind of fell in love with it, and stayed with the rattlesnake for forever, till till now. Always, you can still uh, see I uh, fly it, and um, <coughs> it's uh, is uh, I use it still the most, and it's like a benchmark I always use uh, to compare it with other ships, and none has been able to replace it um, in regards to how I fly. Uh, my needs, uh, the performance, the aesthetic, and uh, so forth. So, um, well, I'm going to show uh, first the kind of the fit that I got from my friend, which is this one. And um, the first thing I always notice is kind of like, oh, look at this, like, uh, how is the tank? Um, uh, is it active, passive? Uh, um, does it does it work uh, cap stability or you know um, cap drain stability you know if it's PvP or whatever for what purposes it done from the first uh, look uh, it looks like he's flying against the blood raiders or Sancha because the resistances are both uh, EM and thermal so it could be missioning or mission specific or it could be null sec ratting um, and uh, there's a, an active mod and um, I immediately see like there's not really any cap stability, so he's probably not perm running it. Um, but then looking at the, that he has a cap mod and then uh, passive recharging mods, this seems a bit off to me, especially since there's no buffer and that, like shield extenders, and which also increase uh, the passive recharge. So this is the passive recharge and active shield boost 115, but it's not cap stable. So in all in all, it's like yeah. Between uh, between the 50 and 150, uh, depending on um, yeah uh, the situation, I guess. Then he has five launchers and um, full uh, full damage uh, mods in the low slots, which isn't isn't wrong, especially if you have low skills. Um, this you might need the DPS to just you know uh, overcome the enemy but there's no application for instance there's no application for 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 the crews which have a big um, explosion radius and slow explosion velocity and there's no damage application for the drones no tracking mods no range no nothing so this is always a bit like mm, uh, maybe we can do better um, especially since EM is the highest resist and EM the second which I'm guessing like I guess Sansa or um, Blood Raiders, um, both of them have higher EM damage, so the thermal damage in comparison to me is a bit over tanked, for instance. I would immediately already disable this one, um, which is enough, which opens up a lot, a, a mid slot. Um, then, of course, you can see for he, he uses, um, yeah, so these are both EM, so this could be Sunshine Blood Raider, even drones, but then for drones, uh, we always have to take care of the explosive for this too. Um, we have some ammunition, and the DPS is over a thousand, over one thousand one hundred even. So this is this is not bad. This is decent DPS, but application would be the question. And looking at the micro jump drive as the only propulsion mod means that he's jumping a hundred kilometers, and as long as he's jumping through um, whoever he's fighting, it is okay because the targeting range is below a hundred, and drone range is only eighty kilometers with no drone range mods for um, the, the sentry guns, for instance. So they are on the limit on, of falloff. Uh, the same goes for you know the, the heavies, which are kind of slow, which have only, only range. 
or they don't have any drone navigation mods for speeds, for instance, or tracking if you're there fighting uh, against something with the smaller. But these are just the basic issues I have um, with the fit, but uh, I don't want to just like fix this one in a way or adjust it to how I like it. I would rather go the other route and show some basic setups and build it up. So um, <coughs> maybe it's just best to just uh, you know, quickly have a look at the EHP, which is just under 100,000. And so I already prepare, uh, prepared some uh, basic raw mods. So I would start with the raw buffer tank. Yes, please. And showcase it if you're fitting. So this is the basic buffer tank, um, which, is feature, which features like a damage control, which is always good, I'd say. I would, it's the first thing I always fit. Uh, there's only very, very special circumstances for fleet rolls when you can, uh, our shield tank, for instance, you can skip the, the damage control because you need all the low slots and you have uh, fleet support to, to uh, help you through any, you know, difficulties uh, tanking. So, but this is the this is the buffer tank, and you can see immediately this is more than twice on raw hit points already, and has higher um, passive recharge on its own. So this is like two shield extenders, and then you have like uh, two invulnerability fields, and then you plug the resistance, the EM resistance hole here, and this is in this case the highest. You can always exchange this one for mission specific or opponent specific. Um, you can even go as far as take out all the shield resistances, the, the involves, and have only two mission specific ones or type specific ones. This can be double EM or it could be EM and thermal, whatever you need. And in the rigs you usually go for the shield extenders. And if you go flying in high sec and missioning, uh, you're safe to use the tech two. Um, if you go low sec, null sec, or for ever, any other purposes, you know, PvP, you would only use the um, tech 1 because this doubles the cost of your hull if you take the tech 2s. So high sec and missioning and this stuff is okay, uh, otherwise you yeah, reduce the price a bit. This is like already 647 million and uh, the ship alone is only 300 something. <coughs> so this is the basic, basic pure buffer. Uh, setup. Then you can have like a passive recharge setup, which looks the same. Um, nothing really changed in the mods here except for the rig slots. So the rig slots, um, because they look the same, of course, well, that's what I meant. But instead of extenders, you go field purger, which increase the recharge much more than uh, pure extension would bring. But you're already losing about a hundred thousand EHP or like eighty thousand uh, to be correct um, to, to gain higher recharge but I always recommend to still have one or at least two uh, shield extenders you need for to, buff, to buffer they also if I disable it they will also increase your passive recharge a bit because you know this is how, how the passive recharge works it you know gets better with more shields because it's uh, um, related to time the time is always fixed and then you add more shield, it recharges more uh, because you know there's more value to, to overcome in that same amount of time. And you would add one or two um, shield power relays. You don't want to use the other ones because they would reduce uh, the capacity. Um, and since your shield tank and not active tank and you have missiles, uh, you don't need much capacitors. So these will reduce your capacitor uh, recharge rate, but it's okay. This is acceptable, but it leaves only three low slots, for instance, for damage and um, some passive application mods. So you're already um, down a bit. I've met somebody um, who has been flying a fit like this, and he had, uh, um, I think, over 600 uh, EHP passive recharge, which is something like this is before resistance. So if you take the resistance into account, and for instance, look at the um, EM resistance, for instance, here, if you take EM damage, this is times five. So this is, uh, um, yeah, like 650 EHP per second, um, stable re recharge you can tank. So everything above that would subtract from the EHP, but uh, 650 DPS you can just face tank. <coughs> um, so going on from, from the buffer and passive one to the active one, so we have the uh, stable um, active boost. 
um, <laughs> which already <laughs> fills up almost everything, <clears throat> which is very difficult to do. Um, I know only very few people who actually go for for um, cap stable active boost and then as high as uh, X lot. And for this, you need to fill up everything with capacitor uh, capacitor control. You need passive recharge mods, cap rechargers, and capacitor flux coils. And uh, so, which will reduce, I think, uh, active shield recharge or something. I don't remember what was it. Uh, capacitor bonus. Uh, yeah, so it reduces the uh, amount of the capacitor but increases the recharge rate. <coughs> because the other one would also reduce the shield boost, which of course is something we don't want to have because we already want to have the boost. So this takes a lot, a lot of mods because you need the resistance, otherwise you have to boost against the missing resistance. Um, you want probably want the booster here um, to make up, you know, for for the high cost of the mod itself in capacitor. So you might have to boost less, or but um, you're still perma perma running. But yeah, this is a this is a very, I'd say, inconvenient um, fit because it has low buffer. Uh, costs a lot of capacitor, is very vulnerable to, to neutralizers and uh, energy drain, has no support slots, uh, has no propulsion, it wouldn't have energy for propulsion too, so, and has only three slots uh, left for like uh, damage uh, application, uh, uh, for raw damage uh, increase. So this is a fit that I would not really recommend. If you go lower of course in shield booster, size you can have you know you need less mods and for capacitor recharge but it's still less effective and looking at the values this would be 314 before resist and if you go lower to 200 um, or like 150 you can actually go already to passive recharge and, and buffer depending on the job of course so this is a, I'd say a very ineffective way to do it, um, to perma run something cap stable. Cap stability is not needed. So then we go to something which goes more into the PVTP area, which is the uh, raw boosted boost, which means we're using a shield booster, but we don't have capacitor recharge. We are boosting with cap boosters our capacitor up. So this is without any um, charges yet. So and for this we use the capacitor safeguard which because it reduces the cost and this is more effective than anything else to reduce the cost for the shield boost. We still want the amplifier to boost a lot. You can still see we have the same amount boosted and cap stability will just come by adding the cap booster. It's already cap stable with one but of course now we have a lot of free mods we might want to use and of course um, there's the um, reload timer on this one so you probably especially in pvp with the drain you know energy drain you might want to use two to off cycle them so you have one active while the other one is recharging so with this one you have you have everything covered um, you can even exchange this one for an ancillary uh, fountain browser let's have a look for an ancillary, ancillary one or you can even add an ancillary one if you want to go for super boost and just like a bait, bait uh, for, for instance in the beginning go into low shields and then boost up with double and it also gives you the opportunity to first use the cap charges uh, of the ancillary booster and then switch on the cap boosters or have double boost. You can of course take this one offline if you, if you only want one and then just say like okay I'm gonna battle through this first and then I'm gonna use the charges afterwards and uh, use the bonus of this one, but it, uh, of course it wraps a little bit less because it's, uh, it takes one second longer to wrap, even though the amount is a little bit higher than this one. So this is the opportunity, but you don't, of course, you don't, you don't need this one. Um, so, but it's a uh, it's it's a possibility to to go double, uh, especially for bait or to exchange one. And here you have uh, three mid support slots, five damage mods, or uh, even uh, passive support slots for the lows. And which gives you, yeah, a great fitting, or you know, uh, opportunity. Um, you can still have uh, resistances here. You can still use one resistance here, and so forth. So these are the four basic types. It's like the the. Um, I can show you the fitting steps for this one here. 
which is just a few mods and, and works fine. <coughs> so we have the, to just go over it a bit, we have the buffer, just don't ask me all the time, we have the buffer, we have the passive recharge, the ineffective, uh, well <laughs> not ineffective but very, you know, demanding uh, cap stable boost, and then we have the boost to boost. So all of these um, are like the, the basic ground construct. And then, for instance, um, this is my ship, the one I'm using most of the time. And you can see from the um, micro jump drive and the two drone uh, link augmenters that I'm uh, usually going for long range sniping. And that since I'm missing uh, any ballistic control units to support the cruise missile launchers and also don't have a fifth launcher means that I'm mostly using drones and I'm only using the cruise missile for instance for um, support. I use them only like for battleships that take a little bit longer and otherwise I use everything, uh, you know, I use the drones for everything. I usually have guards which shoot even far enough with the omnidirectional tracking enhancers and wardens which I think have like 140 kilometers range um, with my skills <coughs> and shoot even without me uh, targeting anything. So, um, and have the target pointer to increase the SIG radius a bit, so uh, this is a very effective ship for me and it works perfect for, for how I um, use it. This is for damage, this is 650 DPS and I only use like uh, the cruise um, sp sporadically just when, when needed. So this is like close to a thousand. But my tank is really high, my passive recharge is quite okay, so far I have never lost a rattlesnake. Um, this is of course, um, as you can see from the rigs, this is a, a high sec fit a mission ship. Uh, I usually uh, I have uh, some dead space now on it because you know, self-found like these, uh, I can found these myself or I got these myself. Uh, everything is usually um, self-found or self-produced. Um, <coughs> uh, when I was in Greaster Space, I got a lot of like um, Dead Space mods, so I just kept them instead of se selling them, and I'm just using them for fun. So yeah, costs costs a little bit. It's a bit a little bit more expensive than this one, anyway. <coughs> but yeah, don't hunt me down. <laughs> and uh, there's a variation I use sometimes for fun. Um, for certain missions or situations, or I like to get exploring uh, a bit, travel around, or accompany some, some friends or court mates. And um, so this is a very similar fit. It just goes from long range to short range, so I need one less drone link augmenter. Uh, I also switched the micro jump drive for an afterburner. I could power run it. Ten minutes are long enough to, to, to power run this. Uh, with 300 meters per second, which is okay, and they have about, I think, 60 to 80 kilometers range. Uh, Inferno. Um, 62 kilometers range, so this is all perfectly fits well together. And I don't know why he's always resetting the drones. I would then use the ogres, of course, and there we have like 1200 DPS, which is very nice with this kind of buffer, and uh, yeah. It, it works great. It's great fun to fly around, <coughs> and you just have to time usually your heavy, heavy rapids uh, reload cycles uh, so you don't mess up. Um, this one is, I think, still yeah. This was a ship I was using for null sec ratting in Gurista space. So always reset to the. As you can see there, the Tech to Wasps, which is uh, just over 1100 DPS, which is similar to the fit that my friend showed me. So it's the same DPS, uh, though I have like more drone speed, more drone tracking. So the Wasps even hit the, the, the smaller frigates, the, the Elite frigates, and uh, just one capacitor mod, because then I can... Um, oh, how was it? I can Trauma run the app, I think. No, it was, yeah, yeah, so I have to disable this one. Yeah, and this is something I have for, like, for emergency um, to wrap some drones or to wrap some help that I might need to come. 
So this is cap stable. So I usually travel away from the open point where I drop like a my, uh, MTU like 20, 30 kilometers away. I orbit it at higher speed, take less damage, and I usually have time, even if somebody warps in unaware of uh, the intel. Um, because I'm away from the warp endpoint and at maximum speed to just deactivate my afterburner and warp out. And just, yeah, book back the tractor unit before, you know, but yeah. So, so this worked fine and I usually don't use the heavies. Uh, I use the heavies only like uh, for, for battleships sometimes when Intel is really good and I just want to speed up the tick a bit. But otherwise I usually have these um, because they help me to fend off um, attackers if, if I might get caught. And um, I can show you in a second. So here I got caught by, by a sweeper uh, uh, who had some friends on his way. But um, I think he was dual boxing or something because um, he orbited me and probably switched to uh, the other ship that was with the fleet. Uh, because I managed to just uh, grind him down very quickly with my, my heavies and I had no scram. So my heavies and my wasps just uh, just killed killed this people very quickly um, before um, help could, could arrive. Uh, then it escalated a bit after this, but the rattlesnake got out fine. So yeah, so um, uh, this is fun. I mean, you, you can even fit a scram in between if you. If you this is fun. I mean, you, you can even fit a scram in between if you if you like this and want to bait more. But uh, that would be a different fit. So um, I only have this shield booster here, for instance, to just boost up a little bit in between. Or if I take damage, it's not really much active boost. It's just an assist that I have for just in just in case. So the active and passive together is about like 80-90. I could go full passive, but you know it wasn't really really necessary. And the the natural resist fit for the Gurista, um rats that were there, so I didn't have to adjust that much. And so this was quite fine and nice. And um, but uh, of course in the alliance there were some people who were like solo bait PVPing a bit, you know, pretending they were ratting. And this is a fit um, which is more like yeah the what you call it like the space defense in a way so this one is based upon like active boost you have uh, like i said the the pith type the the most uh, the massive boost and um, then the cap booster to support it then you would only burst of course the micro warp drive as as needed uh, the same goes for the neutralizer, you would hit it once or twice to neutralize the cap and then immediately just get close, use the grappler, webifier, have the warp disruptor, prevent it from warping and then just palm them down with, uh, yeah, not the small ones, <coughs> with like possibly heavy drones if they hit and then, no, that's not cruise. These, so and that's like uh, almost 1400 DPS. So that's that's yeah, that's a quick fast melt <coughs> if any ship comes close. And the damage application is very good because of the the double web. So the, the rigs are just like the um, the reduction for capacitor, for instance. Uh, I can just put the time view of fitting here. <coughs> you have you have the list. Um, and plug the EM hole, have just one invol, and this is meant for like short fights. Short but brutal fights. And this fit has worked, uh, for instance, very well. This is just an example, you know. Yeah, there was something I forgot to mention is like, um, you can of course exchange some of the mods. You might not need the prop mods, you might not need the second web, you might want to have a second maybe ancillary booster, you know, so you can double boost depending on the incoming damage that you expect. Um, so yeah, you, you, you just uh, you adjust to what you need. So I, I usually only have saved like a PvP fit here. And and then the like the, the high tech measure fits. So it's like a short range or long range. And then two other examples, extreme examples, for instance, are like the price ships here that I gave away at the um, Big Games Lottery, which is now a, a giveaway in the Big Games channel. So this is the uh, like a torpedo launcher um, build. It's like all themed, you know, self-found most of it. Dread Garista, 
Dread Garista mods, Dread Garista mods, um, Augmented Ogres. Oh, no, 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 okay, oops. Yeah, uh, can I drag it from here? No, I can't. Well, sad. I oh, know these are torps. These are torps, that's why. <laughs> okay, let's just check this out quickly. Um, uh, what do we have? Torps, torpedoes, faction torpedoes, just to see. Yeah, 1800 DPS. So this is, this is, uh, yeah. This would have been an 1800 DPS ship. Um, with all group faction fit. Uh, I don't think it's effective, it's just like super, super bling. It's not even that DED mods or officer, it's just like, yeah, the Gurista. So this is maybe something that CCP can use for, you know, make Gurista ships, you know, elite ships or something, or Gurista faction stuff. <coughs> and the other one is a, no, that's the 12th and the 13th anniversary ship. Just like this. Does this have charges? Uh, yeah, it does. So it goes. Yeah, this is 1700 DPS. It's similar um, fit in a different way. Cap boosters here. So this is more like for PvP fit. It doesn't have a scram um, or a disruptor, but it has a festival launcher. Isn't that nice? It's more like PvP defense. You know, I hit you and then you just can run away or on or die. <laughs> yeah, um, the next draw actually is on Monday, which is the next anniversary, uh, the Big Games Lottery. So if you want to take part, just visit the channel at Big Games until Sunday night uh, to sign up. Send him a mail. There's no money involved, no ISK transfer involved. It's not a game. Of chance, it's just uh, participating, you know, in like the community there. Just show up on the channel Monday, eight, uh, six o'clock, and have fun, like we all do, and maybe win some prizes. And yeah, I'd say see you hopefully then. So uh, consider this a small advertisement. I hope I didn't forget anything. Uh, it's just like basic build up. I can go back to my friend's uh, rattlesnake here. And so the things that I would change, or I'm not sure if I would change much, is like consider which range you fight, adjust for the range, make sure that you still can apply the damage that you have, which means maybe exchanging one or the other mod, mid slot, uh, make sure the tank is, is focused, you have either passive or active, don't use these if you go for active tank, rather use cap uh, reduction, or more resistance, um, maybe add one extender as a buffer, you never know, you might want to hold out long enough for help to arrive if something goes horribly wrong. Um, there are of course, of course other options for like fleet fits, you know, fleet fits like uh, might not require you to have a damage control in the low slot. Um, um, might be very specific, you know, that depends on the fleet commander, the ones who makes doc doctrine, uh, I don't want to interfere with this. Uh, this is not what I'm doing. This is more like for solo uh, cruising around. So just, yeah, the, the basic things. And um, otherwise, if you go shorter range, you might want to consider a different mod, you know, prop mod. Make sure that you always bookmark when you drop an MTU. Um, yeah, one thing I wanted to say still is like travel fit. If you're null ratting, um, you get some uh, escalations uh, somewhere. Uh, from the expeditions and you have to travel a few jumps, you know, maybe outside of your comfort zone. They are still allies, but they may, might not be corp mem you know, owned or alliance owned. Maybe the intel is a bit slow that day. Usually what you can do is like, you fit a cloak in the high slot, you fit like three, four core steps in the low slots, and then you're good to travel. You have a depot, once you're in the target location system, you create a safe spot somewhere, if there's no station, uh, you just refit and um, you always have the cloak to just cloak up if somebody comes and then you just go do your exploration, uh, um, sorry, your um, escalation and then you just go back to your depot um, if nobody, you know, no, no, no neutral or enemy came into the system 
and uh, yeah, just refit back to your travel fit, then travel back home and usually f safe. You can't be grabbed really with four or three, four core steps. And otherwise, if you have the time and you're, you're not too close to anything else, you just instantly cloak up if you're not targeted, you know, or just warp out. So, I, like I said, I've never lost the Rattlesnake in Nullsack so far because I always took precautions. My, my ticks weren't that high, I wasn't racing for money, but I didn't really need it anyway. So I was just doing it for the fun and the lols and um, yeah, but I've always, I'd rather be safe than have more, uh, you know, uh, more income per hour because I don't, yeah. I just do play an hour more and have fun with the rattlesnake that is still intact. <laughs> So yeah, that's it. Uh, um, I think I covered everything I wanted to talk about. If you like this, um, just leave uh, something in the comments. Uh, if you want some other ships, uh, I might just casually talk about ships I like. Um, just let me know. This is a bit different than reloads. Uh, and I uh, enjoy very much reloads, guys. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I like people may make more videos about fitting uh, maybe in general maybe explaining somewhat more in detail than uh, others and or, yeah opportunities that you have or special tweaks you can do um, for instance like um, when the cap batteries came back into into uh, you know um, the common usage, you know, in, f in flavor, kind of, um, or like the double cap battery setup for BVP and these things, and explain why, how, and uh, and uh, yeah. So sometimes even uh, talking about capacitor, it's even better to fit one cap battery instead of one uh, capacitor recharger. Maybe we can look quickly at this before this video gets too long. So let's have a look how this pans out. If I would exchange this, so we are cap stable at 34%. Let's see what happens if we exchange it for a battery. Uh, what are the batteries? Flux coils, power release, recharger. Ah, on the top. Okay, let's go for large. So if we take this out, uh, put the large cap battery in. We are cap stable. Not at 34, but at 39. See, so and it gives us uh, neutralizer resistance. So yeah, in some cases it is better to fit a cap battery in between before having too many cap recharge mods. Um, I actually no, okay, you can't skip one. But I actually don't know, for instance, how the um, uh, penalties are for cap recharge. If they just add on the top, or if there actually is a penalty for it, uh, like with resistances and the others, you know, like less effective the more mods you have. But yeah, so a camp battery actually would be better uh, in this case. And uh, so yeah, just uh, came into my mind talking about this. So this would be a better fit than the one I saved already. So there you go. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. And again, greetings to my friends. And uh, see you next time. Bye. Fly safe. <laughs>